So I did a video like this with um, knowledge organizers, if you like, fact sheets that you need to know for forces of motion. And I'm now going to do this one on electrical electric circuits, so the electricity section of the syllabus. OK, so they're starting off with static electricity. And if your teacher may have shown you, if you rub a cloth with a polythene rod, electrons transfer from the cloth to the polythene rod. And because the polythene rod is an insulator, any electrons that it gains remain on its surface. So you've basically produced a static electrical um, charge. And the polythene becomes negative, and the cloth that lost the electrons became positive, in effect, because now it's got fewer electrons. So rubbing two materials together often causes static electricity to build up. And that happens, for example, when you're walking um, with rubber shoes on carpets, uh, the two materials. One will gain electrons, and one will lose electrons. And the one that gains electrons becomes negatively charged, and the one that loses electrons becomes positively charged. You may have done it with a balloon and managed to get a balloon to stick to the wall. Well, the, what, when that happens, the balloon also, I think, becomes negatively charged um, compared to your hair, I believe. And it doesn't really matter. So as long as, say, assume the balloon is negatively charged, if you take the balloon to and stick it on the wall, the, the first surface on the wall is paint. So what happens if the balloon is negatively charged? It will push all the electrons in the wall, on, in the paint layer, deeper into the paint. So the paint effectively, the, the surface of the paint, um, gets a, a charge by induction, by being close to the negative balloon. Its electrons are repelled and go deeper into the wall. So the, the, balloon, the surface of the um, wall becomes effectively slightly more positive than it was before the balloon touched it. And that's why the balloon sticks to the wall, and that's called charging by induction, yeah, just being close to another charged object. So static electricity is a part of electricity. For example, if you're studying edXL IGCSE, it doesn't come in a double award, this section, but it comes in the, single, in the triple, the separate sciences. So if you're doing physics GCSE as a standalone GCSE, yeah, you've got to be able to explain these phenomena in more detail. For those doing G double science GCSE, you just need to know that charge is the basic uh, building block of current. And what current is defined as is the, the rate of flow of charge. Okay? So in metals, there are free electrons. That's why they're good conductors. And in chemistry, we, we, we also call them delocalized electrons. They're basically um, electrons which are not bound to their atom. They're one or two electrons, for example, per atom. If you take copper as a very typical example of a good conductor that's used in um, cables and connecting leads in a science lab, they have, for, for every atom, one or two free electrons which can move towards the positive end of the battery. And that's what's really moving. Okay, So they're not attached to the uh, atoms, or here they call it the positive ions. When the electrons uh, drift towards, they flow. They're calling it flow, but they actually drift very slowly uh, as individual electrons. When they're drifting through a circuit that is attached to um, a cell or a battery, then that um, flow of electrons, the movement of the electrons, the rate of movement of the electrons is what produces the current. So current is defined as the rate of flow of electric charge. It doesn't have to be due to electrons. It could be due to anything. In electrolysis in chemistry, if you've done that in chemistry, you sometimes have positive ions f uh, moving towards the negative electrode. So that's an application of charge flow in a, in a liquid, yeah, or which is a, char an, a liquid that can conduct is called an electrolyte in chemistry. So charge is measured in coulombs. You need to know the units for each of these terms. Current is measured in amps or amperes, capital A, capital C, and, ca and the small s for time. Okay, So that's the equation that relates charge, current, and time together. And remember, current is the 
rate of flow of charge. You can't just say it's the flow of charge. You need to say it's the rate of flow of charge. Because if you make, in this equation, if you make current the subject, it will be charge divided by time. So it's coulombs per second, which is a rate of flow of charge. Okay? Potential difference, I've um, abbreviated to capital P, capital D, is a voltage. PD is basically a voltage. And batteries and cells provide voltage. And voltage is basically the amount of energy you give to the charge. Um, in terms of work done, we call it electrical work done because you're basically moving electrons through um, a conductor. And it's the PD that's doing the work on the charge. And the amount of work it does per unit charge is called voltage. So it's one volt is one joule per coulomb, just like one amp is one coulomb per second. So they both have coulombs in them. Okay? One provides the energy, and the other is a measure of the rate of flow um, in the material that's conducting. Okay, so PD, it says, is defined as the work done between two points in a circuit per coulomb. And you can measure it with a voltmeter. For a current, you need to measure it with an ammeter. Okay? And we'll talk about how you um, put them in a circuit correctly later on. Hopefully, there'll be a slide that uh, shows you the correct circuit. Okay? Now, these are very useful revision slides, and you can make your own like this. So you should stop the video and make sure you have all of these notes in uh, your book or wherever you're doing your revision. Okay? So I'm putting these revision notes up on my YouTube channel to prepare all students, whichever board you're doing, to make sure you've got the basics understood in, in time for your mocks. Most schools do mocks either end of December or the beginning of January. We're doing them at the beginning of January, and we're using Edexcel. So resistance is basically um, the resistance to the flow. Yeah, And some materials resist more than others, and different components in circuits can be measured to have the resistance, which is measured in ohms. And this omega term, yeah, it's a Greek letter, it's a capital omega, yeah, just like the symbol used on omega watches, which you may have seen, is uh, the relationship between the voltage and the current. The potential difference divided by the current is the definition of resistance. Okay, and this is called Ohm's law. Okay, so Ohm uh, was another scientist, and they given um, his name to the unit of resistance. So Ohm's uh, symbol is omega. So electrons need to push themselves past vibrating ions. Sometimes the vibrating ions are in a lattice structure. Well, well, they are in a lattice structure. Sometimes these vibrating ions vibrate and impede the flow of the electrons. Imagine your electron, and you may just bump into one, and that um, slows down your rate of progress towards the positive end of the uh, circuit. Okay? So if, there, if, the, if you increase the temperature of a wire, the ions vibrate more, and they actually increase the um, impedance to the flow. Okay? So that's what temperature, temperature causes them to vibrate faster. Yeah. And they have more vibrational kinetic energy. And then it's harder for the electrons to go through without being impeded. And that's really, for metals, that's the cause of resistance. Okay? So imagine each of these atoms in orange have these electrons trying to go there. If these atoms are vibrating backwards and forwards or up and down, the electrons won't be able to flow as fast through um, the circuit. Okay? And then it's, it wants you to know what instruments we use to measure current, what instruments we use to measure potential difference, and you've got to also know how to draw a circuit diagram. Okay? So the different devices you, you come across in GCSE and A-level, um, for that matter, are just a resistor, yeah, which is the same as a wire. It's a, what's called an ohmic conductor because wherever you divide the voltage potential difference by the current, the ratio will be the same. It's a, sta it's a straight line. Whether you go in, in a negative direction, so you're actually going one way through the wire, or the other, the ratio is the same. It's the same, a filament lamp, um, although the direction doesn't make any difference to the ratio between the PD and the current, as you put more energy in or more voltage across the bulb, yeah, the filament lamp, um, 
and there, uh, the, the more you put, the hotter it gets, the more it impedes the current. Okay, it resists the current more. So you can see as you double the voltage, the current does not double in step with it. And that's because it's a non-ohmic, we call it a non-ohmic conductor. To be ohmic, it's got to be a straight line graph through the origin, yeah? So for a, for a filament lamp, and the reason they call it a filament lamp is because it's got a tiny little wire called a filament, um, usually made of tungsten, yeah? I think always made of tungsten. And they basically, it get, the tungsten is used because it has a very high melting point, and it allows the uh, filament to get hot when a current uh, reaches the correct um, uh, voltage, when the correct voltage is put through the filament lamp for its operating procedure. Uh, it glows white, or uh, if it's not at full voltage, it might glow yellow or even orange. Okay? And this is the symbol for it. They haven't put the symbol for the resistor, the symbol for the resistor is a rectangle like this without this line going through it. So if a fixed resistor would be a rectangle with nothing else going through it. Then here you've got a diode. Okay. Now the diode only lets current flow through it in one direction. So a bit like a funnel. You don't want a funnel upside down. You don't want a diode back to front. So the, the current in one direction is allowed to flow. Yeah, And this uh, would be going through from right to left in this symbol, yeah? If the, if the positive of the battery is on this side, then it would allow the current to flow through it. If you try to do it the other way, you'll get no current. So in one direction, the resistance is extremely high, like you could say zero current. It does break down if you, if you put really hundreds and hundreds of volts across it, though. And then at a certain voltage, suddenly the current starts flowing and then it becomes a lot easier for it to flow as the voltage goes above that value. Normally around 0.6 volts it starts to conduct in the forward direction and these are semiconductor devices, they're not made of metals, okay, often using semiconductors like silicon and used for control circuits in electronics. Thermistors are also semiconductor devices usually um, they are negative temperature coefficient so when you increase the voltage the current um, will increase, yeah? When it gets hotter, the current increases, the resistance decreases, okay? Now, they've drawn these as straight line graphs, but there are other graphs that you need to look at. For the thermistor, it means a resistor which depends on therm, which is heat. The hotter they get, the less resistance they have, okay? You d I don't think this graph will come up as much as the one that I'm talking about, okay? And a light-dependent resistor has a symbol with arrows going in to represent light. The rectangle is a resistor, and they usually put a circle around it because they are usually that shape when you use them. And again, this is a semiconductor device, and in this case, the light incident on the material frees up electrons. So as you have more light intensity, the resistance decreases. Okay? So here's a, a useful way, place for you to stop and make sure you have notes on all of these things. I've explained it all to you, yeah? The effect of temperature, that's why when you're doing an experiment, uh, your teacher may have told you, make sure you switch off the current between readings so it doesn't um, create a problem with temperature which could affect the accuracy or the reliability or the validity of your experiments. You want to, to keep the temperature constant when you're, when you're using an ohmic conductor in particular, like a wire, yeah, or a fixed resistor. And also, if you put too much, if you overheat them, they can melt if they're not able to cope with the amount that's gone through, okay? So you need to be able to explain why the resistance changes in each of these cases, yeah, like the LED in two directions, like the thermistor, um, the ones that you normally use are the ones I explained. So high temperature will be the red line, it says, yeah, where the resistance is lower and the blue one will be um, the low temperature one where the resistance is higher okay so the both the last two the the resistance decreases one with heat and the other one with light hope that makes sense if you haven't got notes on that make sure you've done so okay then you've got series and parallel circuits okay 
So if you've got series and parallel circuits, wherever you put the ammeter in position one, two, or three in a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. Whereas you notice that the um, ammeter has to go actually as part of the circuit, so everything is in series. But if you've got the same circuit, yeah, as above, you don't put the ammeters in. If you want to measure the voltage across the three components, the cell, the variable resistor, which is the symbol here, and the filament lamp, which is the symbol with the X in a circle. If you want to measure the voltages of each component, you've got to put the voltmeters not in the circuit, but across the component, yeah? So this measures the voltage provided by the cell, this measures the voltage used by the variable resistor, and this measures the voltage uh, used by the bulb. So whatever this voltage provided by the cell, it's shared between the two um, components which are using up the energy. So cells and batteries provide the voltage, or the energy per unit coulomb, and the components like resistors and bulbs or lamps, they use the voltage. Okay? So the voltage provided is equal to the voltage consumed in total. Okay? So uh, the other thing is if you've got a parallel circuit, like here, then you've got uh, the current going from the cell, then over here it can go in two parallel paths. It can go through the bulb circuit, the filament lamp circuit, or it can go down here through the variable resistor circuit. And then over here, the, this current initially will split into A2 and A3, yeah? And then it will then join up again at the junction where the two currents come back together in A4. So A1 and A4 are the total current leaving and the total current coming back. And A2 and A3 are the currents when they're divided across um, the two, uh, through each path. Okay? So it's written A1 equals A2 plus A3. And then A2 and A3 add up to become A4 as they join up again. Okay? So in the parallel circuits, the current divides. Um, and in the... In the parallel circuit for voltage, the voltages um, in each circuit, in each path, are the same. So if you have this much voltage for this cell, and you've got one bulb in one of the circuits, in one of the paths, this bulb will get the full voltage of the cell. So V1 will be equal to V2, because the second path does has its own direct connection with the cell. So again, this V voltage for the cell will also provide voltage for, this, for the uh, variable resistor in the second of the two parallel paths. So the current divides and the voltage is the same for all paths in parallel. Okay? So that's a simple way of understanding the circuit rules in series on this side of the page and in parallel on this side of the page. So just make sure you stop the video and make sure you've understood all that and you've got clear notes on series and parallel circuits, okay? Of course, if you've got a parallel circuit, you got the more paths you got, the more quickly you drain your battery because it has to provide the full voltage to all of the paths in parallel, okay? And then mains electricity is the electricity we use in homes. We don't use cells and batteries. Um, they, they produce a constant current called direct current. Yeah, whereas in mains electricity we use what's called an alternating current here, is one that is constantly changing direction. Actually, it changes direction 50 times a, s a second. So mains electricity is said to have a frequency of 50 hertz and is about equivalent to 230 volts of DC. Yeah, this is the value used in most European countries, the UK and the UAE, where I'm teaching. In uh, uh, countries like the US and I think Canada, they use 60 hertz and they use about 110, 115 volts. Okay, it's just a standard um, difference between them. It doesn't, uh, the devices will be designed to be able to handle the voltage for the country that they're um, designed for. Okay, so you can actually put um, AC current in uh, what's called an oscilloscope which measures voltage against time. 
and I did a separate video on this where they actually show the vault, the um, how the uh, oscilloscope, CRO is called, cathode ray oscilloscope, how it's designed. So you see, this is what an uh, alternating voltage would look like, and a, uh, an oscilloscope can measure voltage against time, so you can show how the voltage varies, and obviously the distance between um, um, one trough and another trough, yeah, which is the opposite, opposite of peak, for those of you learning in a second language, is called the time period. And if there are 50 um, negatives and 50 positives per second, then this will be a 50th of a second, the time period, okay? That means you get 50 of these in one second. So the oscilloscope allows you to analyze the, the change in current or change in voltage um, using basically what is uh, up and down is voltage, the y-axis is voltage, and the x-axis is time. And the center is the zero point in these uh, devices. So it's basically a voltage time plotter. Now it's cables. Uh, some appliances need two wires going to them um, if they are made of plastic. So they don't need the earth wire because the earth wire is only needed if the if the, the appliance has a metal casing because the earth wire is a safety device which allows if the if the metal casing becomes live we call it that means it's touched by the live wire somehow that you dropped it or something or wire becomes loose inside then if the metal casing suddenly becomes live the earth wire basically takes that um, current all the way straight to earth as a, as a safety feature that is provided for um, appliances which have metal casings. So that's when you need the safety wire to be attached to the casing as well. Okay. Normally the um, live wire is a bit like the positive in DC and the blue wire is a bit like the negative. So whereas in DC we say the current goes from um, positive to negative, in mains electricity the live wire is the, the originator of the uh, power and it flows from the live so it goes through this cable to your appliance whatever it might be like a kettle heats up the water and then the exits it exits through the blue wire here and goes back into the socket in the wall okay and they they keep the blue wire is called neutral because they keep it at zero voltage yeah whereas the live wire is the one that fluctuates from um, high voltage, like on average, even higher than 230 volts. 230 is not the uh, peak voltage, uh, which I've noticed some uh, courses have explained it is, to minus that value. So this is where the energy comes from, because remember, most appliances like heaters, resistors, filament lamps, they don't care which way the electricity is going through them. Yeah, They, they will just have a heating effect. There's also a fuse which always needs to be um, connected in the plug to the live wire because remember the live wire is the one that carries the energy or doesn't carry the energy, it has to be wrong, it carries the voltage, yeah? This is the high voltage and the neutral wire is the zero voltage and that's how you get a potential difference between the blue wire and the brown wire. If you put a voltmeter across there, on average, if you put an AC, the average value it would read an AC voltmeter. You have to use an AC voltmeter. It wouldn't work with a DC voltmeter. It would read on average 230 volts and that's what how, it, how an AC voltmeter works. So the fuse contains a very thin wire which it heats up and only melts if too much current passes through it. So if somehow there's the, the circuit has gone wrong and too much current goes through it, it will melt the fuse. And that's why you need to make sure you put the correct fuse in for the appliance. So a high-powered appliance, you will use a 13-amp fuse. A low-powered appliance should not use a 13-amp fuse. It can use a, a lower value. And there are circuit breakers as well, which you have in your home. You know what it, every home has a circuit breaker, and I'll show you those in a minute. And they're electromagnetic devices which detect when there's a fault and basically switch off the current in that part of the, the ring circuit in your home and switch off the electricity until you work out what's caused it to trip. Tripping is meaning that the current in that circuit has been switched off, yeah, and it's, uh, it's called an RCCB, 
a residual current circuit breaker. They're electromagnetic in nature, and unlike a fuse, there is no melting involved. It just switches it off, and you can reset them, yeah, um, uh, when you work out what the problem was, okay? So here are some equations. So just like we did electricity uh, equations in forces and motion, these are, there's quite a few electricity in um, this chapter as well. Charge is current times time. Power is current times voltage. Voltage is work done per unit charge or energy per unit charge. Excuse me, I've clicked by mistake. Voltage is uh, uh, work done per unit charge or energy per unit charge. Ohm's law, voltage is equal to current times resistance. Power is the rate of flow of energy, so it's energy per unit time, yeah? Um, and power is also equal to current times voltage, okay? They're telling you that you can use this equation in this form for the higher tier students, okay? This is a very common equation used in A-level physics, so try to think about it, but remember, Energy is joules, voltage is joules per coulomb, and charge is coulomb, so it does make sense if you think of it in terms of units. They've got a few questions for you to try. I'm not going to go through those. I'm just showing you the different things that you need in your notes when you're revising. So go through these questions to see if you can use these equations. The power equation, yeah, energy per unit time, and the power equation, current times potential difference or voltage. Um, and then for higher tier, it says you should be able to use this equation too. And it does remind you about prefixes. Mega is 1 times 10 to the 6 in standard form. Kilo, which is a small k, is 1 times 10 to the 3. And milli is 1 thousandth, or 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And micro is a, is a millionth, yeah, or, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So you need to make sure you know your prefixes. Well, that's the end of the revision, the basic revision of the electricity circuits. And uh, I hope you, that you found that useful. So if you, if you want more videos like this, make sure you like, share to show your appreciation um, for the amount of extra work that's been go gone in to make these videos for you. And subscribe, and then you will then be notified when another video is uploaded. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video, hopefully. Bye for now.